Hey everyone, today we're going to take a look at how you can install Plex on a Synology NAS using Docker. Now the main reason we're going to take a look at this today is because the DSM-7 release candidate version that was just released last week does not currently have a Plex package that is working. So the Plex package that had worked in the beta, unfortunately something changed between the beta and the release candidate version and that package will no longer work. Now Plex is basically blaming Synology but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. What matters is that we don't have a working package, so we need to look into alternative methods if we'd like to have Plex working on DSM-7. So in this case, Docker works great, and the steps are relatively straightforward. So before we get started, I just want to mention that I have full written instructions for all of this in the description of the video. So the first thing that you have to do is make sure that you have Docker installed. And if it is installed, you'll see in the shared folder section that you have another folder called Docker. Inside the Docker folder, we're gonna create a folder named Plex, and then inside of that, we're gonna create three subfolders. One named Config, one named Transcode, and one named Data. After that's done, you can launch Docker, and then you're gonna to have to open the registry and download the latest Plex Inc slash PMS dash Docker image. This is the official Docker uh, image for Plex. It's gonna take a little bit for this to download, but once it's done, you should be able to double click the image and then you're gonna launch the configuration tool. So at this point, you can give your container a name and then you can select advanced settings. Make sure that you enable auto restart and then you're gonna click into the volume section. Now we're first gonna map three volumes. We're gonna map the config folder that we created to the forward slash config location. We're gonna map the transcode folder to the forward slash transcode location and we're gonna map the data folder to the forward slash data location. These are the three default volumes that we have to create. This basically ensures that if you ever wanna move this uh, Plex container off of this NAS onto a different device, you can just copy these folders, map the volume, and everything should stay the same. Now that's the default Plex information. The next step is gonna be different for everybody and it's dependent on how you have your media files set up on your NAS. So for me, I have a media folder, and inside of that, I store all of my uh, media files. So I have a movies folder, I have a TV shows folder, and I have a music folder. However, there are a lot of people that have three separate shared folders for every single media type. So if you have it set up the way that I have it set up, you can go through and you can select the media folder that you have, and then you can map it to the forward slash media location. If you have it split up, you're gonna to have to create three different or five different, however many folders you have, you're gonna to have to map those different shared folders to different locations. Now you can use whatever name you want. So if you wanted to do forward slash movies and forward slash TV shows, et cetera, you can do that. Uh, basically the, the forward slash location on the right hand side here doesn't matter. That you can put as whatever you want. Uh, and the folder on your NAS, you just have to make sure you're mapping the correct media folder. So that's the only tricky part as far as this goes. You just have to make sure that you map your media properly. Next, we're gonna head over to the network section and we're gonna select use the same network as Docker host. Now, once that's done, we have to take a step back and we're gonna have to SSH into our Synology NAS. Uh, we'll get to why in a second, but if you don't know how to SSH into your Synology NAS, I will leave a pop-up for that now. Uh, but once you're SSH'd in, we have to run a command that will give us the user ID and the group ID of a user that has access to our media folders. So when you created your shared media folder, you had to give specific permissions to either users or groups. And in this section, we have to pass the user ID and the group ID of a user account that has permission to those shared folders to our Docker container so that it can actually access those files. The easiest way to probably think about this is that the default Docker user that the container is run with does not have permission to access your media files. So we're going to give it a user account that does have permission to those media files so that it can basically impersonate that user and access the media. So in order to do that, you're gonna type in the command ID and then the username of whatever that user is. From there, you should see the user ID and you should see the group ID. So for me, it's 1026 and group 100 because my users group has permission to those media files. If for whatever reason you have a different user group that has access to those media files, you'll have to use that. So once that's done, you can head back to DSM and you're gonna have to open the environment variables section and you're gonna create two variables. You're gonna create one for PUID and one for GUID 
and you're gonna substitute the information with whatever you found in the last step. So like I said, for me, it's 1026 and group 100. Uh, for you, it might be different, but you're just gonna put whatever you had there. Now I'm gonna say this one more time because it is very important. You have to make sure that the group that you put here and the user that you put here have permission to those media files. If you put different values and they don't have permission, you're not gonna be able to find those files when you launch Plex. So once you do that, you can apply all of your settings and you can create the container. So it's gonna take a few seconds for the container to get started, but you'll be able to then navigate to the IP address of your Synology NAS, port 32400 forward slash manage. In the written instructions, I have exactly the URL that you'll have to type out. Uh, but when you get there, you're gonna to have to sign in with your Plex username and password. If you don't already have an account, you can go ahead and create one here. And then you're gonna to have to give your server a name. Once that's done, you can select next, and then you're gonna to have to create your media file locations here. So you can select add library, you can select whatever content type you'd like to use, and then you're gonna to have to find that media folder. Now you're gonna to have to do this for every type of media file that you have. So for most people, I'm assuming you're gonna have movies, uh, music, and TV shows but there are people that might have things like home movies and other things, and you're gonna to have to create different media types based on whatever type of files that you have. So make sure that you create one for each of those locations. You're gonna need one per folder, so make sure you do that. Uh, and when you're done, you can select next and then done. Now at this point, Plex is gonna to start to crawl in all of your media, and it's gonna to try to get all of the cover art and metadata. Now depending on the size of your media library, this is gonna be something that can be done relatively quickly or something that might take a long time. So obviously the more that you have, the longer it's gonna take. But at this point, everything is set up and configured. So you're gonna be able to go through and you're gonna be able to connect from whatever media devices that you have that normally uh, you stream your Plex content to, and you should be able to find the server and you should be able to uh, stream any of that media at that time. Now I wanna be clear that if you're watching this video at a later time when uh, the DSM-7 Plex package works, there's nothing inherently wrong with using it. Generally, that's probably what the majority of people are using. Um, the reason why we're implementing this is because DSM-7 right now doesn't work with Plex. Now there's nothing wrong with keeping um, Plex running on Docker if you implement it. Uh, for a lot of people, they actually prefer that because it is more portable at that time. Basically, you're able to take uh, these three folders that we created, the uh, data, config, and transcode folders, and you can put this onto a different machine running Docker, and everything should function the same as long as you mount those volumes properly. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but hopefully this all made sense to you guys. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. If the video helped you out, give it a thumbs up, and please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks, guys.